Hi there, I'm John from sandboxranch.com and today we'll review the tea light box options that we have on our website. So this is a standard box that you see on sandboxranch.com. It doesn't matter the design, basically the size, the shape, everything is this way. Now, of course, you can totally customize it however you want, different materials, different designs, whatever. It's totally customizable. But the original idea I got for, for it was actually from a buddy of mine in Australia called David. And David was doing very high-end tea light boxes. And they're a lot larger, they're a lot more complicated. And I thought that would work pretty cool. But what I want to do is go for a volume instead of a super high-end sort of thing. And that's how it came down to using MDF, which is what you see here. The nice thing about MDF is when you laser cut it, you automatically produce smoking all around it. And that works out really, really well because it's a tea light box. That's how I was selling these. And they still work wonderful as a tea light box, but I've started using them actually as boxes. And if you really want to use it, be creative, you can use it as banks as well if you wanted to. Pencil holders, anything. It's a box. So my buddy David would have these really, really nice boxes and they had a lot more ornamental details. Uh, the designs were larger, everything. And of course, I can make that for you as well here uh, using any kind of wood species you want. So the standard one at sandboxranch.com is MDF. MDF is a good material for this application here because again, it produces nice smoky edges, but it's also dimensionally stable, meaning it doesn't want to warp on you as easy as, let's say, uh, solid wood would, especially at this thinness. Any solid wood at this, at this thickness, this is one eighth inch, uh, will definitely start warping on pretty quick, especially when you have a light inside of it that's producing heat and nothing on the outside, it all starts to go crooked on you, unless you go with something a lot thicker. Anyways, the way it works is every panel is identical like this here, and you have, they just interlock like this until you form a complete box. And that's the genius that, that David had because when I saw that I go, ah, that's a really quick design because what it means is that you can customize whatever you want on the face here and it'll work perfectly. Everything just fits perfectly. Now you also have a base that fits into here as well. This is the back side of it. This is the front. So the base fits in here and it holds everything together. You just put a little bit of glue and you have a basically a finished box. You notice during the production of these tea light boxes that I'm always doing the inside part before the outside part. The reason for that is pretty straightforward because if I cut the outside part, it might shift maybe, you know, a sixteenth or, you know, it's not really out of tolerance for this at all, but it's just a habit that I have. So you don't want things moving unless they have to. So what that means is you want to keep everything as a full sheet as long as possible. Whether I do so with the router, the light, the laser, the plasma, it doesn't matter. So I'm doing the inside parts first because if those inside parts move, it doesn't really matter because they've already cut out what I needed to cut out. And then after all of this is done, then I cut out the outside because that means that the inside will be 100% accurate and the outside will match the inside because it was only cut from the full sheet that you see there at the fi very final, final process of making these tea light boxes. Now the nice thing about MDF is that it really, really, really loves paint. So this is the standard what you'd get in the mail, like this here. So you get this. And honestly, all you have to do is just spray paint it if you want a different color. Now let me give you an idea. So this here is spray painted gray. And it looks fantastic. And you can see the inside of the base solid. And this one is actually has been on craft shows, maybe hundreds of craft shows, and it's still pretty solid, everybody picks it up and stuff. So it does have a bit of wear and tear on it, but it looks totally fine. And then whenever I wanna renew it, all I have to do is spray paint it once more, and basically have a brand new box. Now this can hold a lot of pencils, a lot of crayons, you can hold money, you can hold anything. That's the nice thing about it. Now if you wanna put it outside on a table or something like that, you do have to be careful, uh, because you don't want this to get wet. The nice thing about MDF is that it's pretty cost effective. The bad thing is once it gets wet, it doubles in size and halves in value. It just starts basically falling apart, crumbling, basically. So what that means is you want to put a sealant over it. And by seal, I mean like a waterproofing. And put a couple of layers of waterproofing on it and you'll be fine. 
If you're not sure if you put enough, put more. So when it comes to making these designs that you see here, it's a pretty straightforward process. And it doesn't really matter the material, it's always basically the same idea. Uh, these are essentially stencils. So what, you, what that means is you want something supporting inner parts, which is why you see a lot of these designs with inner sort of motifs or things like that, sort of hide the point that you need support materials for inside parts, because otherwise if they're not there, the problem that you have is they fall out and the tea light box will look horrible because you just have these huge gaping holes instead of these intricate designs. And that's something I realized pretty quickly when I started making these tea light boxes in mass. In this case here, I'm doing a production run for an upcoming show. So there was a couple of designs that I needed to upgrade and I also needed to finish up so that I had enough inventory and that's what I'm making here. So you notice that the laser doesn't really care what it's actually doing and there's also no two-way feedback system. So the laser here, whether it's doing a fish or a boat or musical notes, it doesn't matter. It just does the design that it tells it to. So it doesn't really get tired or bored. You know, I've done production runs where basically I make hundreds of one specific design and the nice thing about the laser or any other CNC we have here in the shop is it'll just do it and not complain or need a break or anything like that, which is great. Because some of this stuff can actually get monotonous, especially when you're doing the same design over and over and over and over again. The other thing to keep in mind is there's no two-way feedback system. And you can see the laser coming out of the laser head straight down. And what you're seeing is the results. You don't actually see the laser anywhere, because if you did, you'd actually see it going from the right of the screen all the way to the head. And you see nothing there, although that's where the laser actually is. So you just see the results. Unlike a router, with you have the bits spinning down, you can actually say, well, go down a sixteenth of an inch into this piece of material, and it'll go down one sixteenth of an inch into that piece of material. The laser doesn't have that. It just cuts through based on power and speed, and that's it. Now, with something like this, which is MDF, that's not a problem at all. It's perfect material, perfect process, perfect machine for that. If I was doing something like this that had a lot of knots in it, or different densities in the material, that's where it gets a little bit tricky because the laser doesn't know that it's going to something denser or less dense. It just uses the same power regardless. With the router, you have a spinning bit, so it doesn't really matter the density of the material to a certain extent if you have a hardwood or softwood. But with the laser, it is a little bit more finicky regarding making sure you get an accurate cut. As mentioned earlier, we can make these boxes any size, any shape, any design profile you want, including any material. So here's another one we made a little while back. This one is actually made out of solid aluminum. The nice thing about aluminum, it's incredibly strong compared to MDF. And of course, if you wanted this out of stainless steel, I can make it just as easily. So there's really no limit regarding material. Polycarbonate, um, HDPE, you want it out of Corian, what have you. Now the nice thing about the design is that it scales infinitely. So let's say you wanted this to be larger panels like this for an art exhibit or something like that. Uh, we can also customize the sizing. So let's say you wanted one like this here, you want another one that would sort of fit into it or be double the size and make a pyramid or you know whatever sort of creative ideas you might have for your tea light box or just general box. Uh, just contact me at sandboxranch.com. On the website there's over 500 designs but there's no way, by no means, the limit of what we can do with this. So if you're looking for a custom box, and the nice thing to remember is that when it ships, it ships like this. It's basically flat. So you're basically, most of the time we ship stuff, let's say one of our banks, it's actually, uh, we're shipping a lot of air. And with this one product here, the nice thing is we don't ship it like this, we ship it like this. So basically it just fits in an envelope. So it's very cost effective to ship, very easy to assemble. We put a bit of glue in the corners and you're pretty much done. So if you're looking for custom boxes, contact me at sandboxranch.com. Feel free to, for free to visit the website and get ideas of what we can do for you and we'll go from there.